Hi, I'm Patrick Murphy, the CEO of Togol AI. First of all, I'd like to thank Contech for hosting this and Fortis Lux for sponsoring this program today. You're probably wondering what the heck Togol AI even means. So I'll start there. Togali is the Gaelic word for builder. That's the Irish language. My name's Patrick Aaron Murphy, so having an Irish name kind of made sense. So what the heck do we do? Well, uh, we are here today to give a little demonstration of uh, the past, present, and future of estimating in construction. So we're going to dive in and give a little example of it. But just to kind of set the stage, when any builder gets a set of plans, they're asked to price it. That's the very first thing a contractor or subcontractor has to do. Well, how do you price a job? you got to know how big it is. So the first thing that's done is measuring the spaces that make up a job. This could be a home. This could be a condo, an apartment. It could be a warehouse, a hospital. It doesn't matter what it is. got to measure the sizes. So estimators historically were spending time, first here that will be shown by Dylan, with rulers and rollers on a set of plans that are printed out measuring the spaces. As time has progressed, people used to uh, a, a program uh, on a computer or software and have been measuring it manually on a computer. The future of estimating will be Togol, and that's what we're going to show you. That is powered by machine learning, where we are taking what a human does in three to four days and now doing it in five to ten seconds by using machine learning. Togol has been trained on tens and tens of thousands of sets of plans, labeled data, that is now being automated by the algorithms. This now frees up the estimators to focus on higher value tasks, such as value engineering, such as scoping, such as finding new trade partners. Ultimately, that wins more work for the contractor. So with that being said, let's dive in. First thing we're gonna do is these two gentlemen are gonna upload a set of plans that they haven't seen yet, and they're gonna upload these plans on their computer. As Johnny uh, here is first uploading it, um, I'll mention that Johnny, Spencer, and Dylan have all been in the estimating field for, what, about 10 years or so. So they've all been doing this um, in, in basically the same manner their whole life. So they understand uh, the process very well. Uh, Spencer here is uh, going to download the plans as well. And if we can, maybe we can hold up these plans so the, user, uh, so the viewers can see this is what they're going to have on their computer screen. So all three people here have the exact same set of plans. And the task is measuring all these spaces, measuring the walls, counting the objects, and then putting that all in a spreadsheet that the estimator can then price and give to a client. So uh, I think we're almost ready here. As this is getting, getting pulled up, uh, I will mention that the individual, Spencer, is going to be using a program called OnScreen. On-screen is the, the dominant way to, to do takeoffs in the industry now. Uh, the vast majority of contractors use a program called On-screen, but there are some other ones like Bluebeam uh, and others that are out there. So uh, he's decided to, to do this on On-screen today. That's what he's most familiar with. Um, and Dylan here is doing the traditional way with an actual roller and ruler, which, by the way, 20% of contractors still use this method of estimating. So it uh, looks like all three competitors uh, have the plans ready. So we're going to do a little competition and see who can get all these data points into a spreadsheet the quickest. So uh, if you guys are ready, on the count of three, we'll get going. All right. One, two, three. All right. So uh, as they're going here, you're going to first see Dylan starting to prepare uh, a set of notes, and he is looking at, at the plans, determining what kind of building is it, right? Is it a residential building? Is, is, it, is it hospitality? What is it, and what does he need to measure? Uh, right now, Spencer here on the computer screen is setting up the plan. He is coming up with a name of it. He, he is uh, labeling some of the basic details, maybe who the architect is, where it's located, the date of the plans. He's inputting all that information, and he's about to start clicking on all the individual rooms in a manual process clicking, dragging, drawing these various polygons that then get priced. Something that's important to note here is this isn't just used for general contractors. This is all the subcontractors. This is flooring. Uh, this is roofing. This is drywall. This is trim. This is cabinets. Uh, this is concrete. Everything that goes into making up a building 
has to know how big it is, right? If you're going to price it, you got to know how big it is. So all those various trades can use uh, Togal, this, our company that we're talking about here, uh, as a means to speed things up. So Johnny here, the uh, gentleman using Togal, uh, it looks like is already done with the actual takeoff. Uh, he is going through doing some labeling, cleaning up the document. Uh, it looks like Spencer is doing some labeling, hasn't started the actual takeoff yet. He's labeling the rooms uh, that have to get in the spreadsheet for his boss in order to price it. And we've just started the measuring here manually. So as we are moving along here, we see Johnny is on to his counts now. So what we're doing is we are uh, doing measurements of all the various room types. So if you're a flooring subcontractor, for example, you would be labeling the floors with, say, wood floor, maybe marble, uh, maybe it's carpet, whatever it is, and would be labeling that based on those plans. So he's doing that. The next step would be labeling the different wall types. And what we've done in Togal is since we can automatically detect the kind of room that there is, we can predict the type of wall there is. Because when you're doing a takeoff for drywall, there's different types of drywall. This is based on whether it's an interior wall, an exterior wall, different fire ratings go into that, and we are predicting some of that for the user. So a drywall subcontractor uh, spends hours and hours trying to determine every single wall type that's out there. Now, instead of spending those hours, it's done in the click of a button for drywall. If you're a painter, right, there's different colors in all the different, different rooms, the ceiling, uh, et cetera. That can all be done with a click of a button by some of the auto labeling features that we have. So it looks like Spencer here is starting to draw uh, these polygons, draw these boxes. Uh, and he is, looks like, just getting started uh, with the actual drawing after he set this up. How's it going, Dylan? We're moving. All right. Room number two. <laughs> so when I grew up in construction, um, my very first job was working with my grandfather, uh, who taught my, my brother how to estimate and taught, taught me how to do it as well. And this is how I was taught to do it, was with a roller and a ruler. Uh, with a set of blueprints taking off every single room. And you can imagine, as you're starting to measure these spaces, you get one little interruption, one little phone call, and, and you're almost back to, to square one, starting over uh, with that. So oftentimes you'll use many colors, you'll use highlighters, you'll take all sorts of notes on the plans. And that could end up just on that one sheet being your whole morning, right? That could be three, four hours easily to do that. And imagine a set of plans. It's not just one sheet. Right? You've got all sorts of different you know, pieces of that plane. You've got uh, sections that zoom in. You've got vertical. You've got horizontal, you know, looking down on the plan. You've got different floors often. They're all different sets of plans. All that has to have a takeoff on it. So Johnny, how are we doing here? I am kind of done. I need like another two minutes. Okay. Johnny is completing the spreadsheet, filling out uh, all of the square footage uh, into his spreadsheet, and that will be given to his boss who will then finish the pricing. Once that pricing is done, that's given to the client. And that is how contractors make money ultimately, right, is those bids. They have to be competitive. Uh, and, and that's where a contractor will often make or break themselves. So I don't know, we're maybe, what, three minutes in or so, a couple minutes into this. Uh, and Johnny has completed the task at hand. Spencer is still working on the first Still on the first unit of, what, 15 units, and you're on the second unit or so. So uh, a little idea of the value proposition here of how quick Togol is and how powerful machine learning is. Taking a task that's going to take these two gentlemen all day to finish has been done in a matter of minutes here. So we're lucky to have Chris join us today. Chris has been an estimator for, what, over 30 years? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and has been involved in estimates of jobs worth over about $20 billion. So he's seen a lot of estimating, seen a lot of takeoffs, uh, been doing it for some time. So uh, first, Chris, tell us a little bit about why the takeoff process, that square foot analysis, is so important. Well, basically when you're putting together an estimate, especially when you have uh, rough order of magnitudes or schematic estimating, um, you don't have subcontractor input at that point, but we have to be able to be able to tell the owner how much something costs, and the best way to do that is to take the building, 
and break it down mm -hmm. to unit pricing that you already know from cost histories, past things that you've gathered over the time, and take those and be able to put unit prices to it. And the only way to do that is to take off the building into its entirety. Great. So tell us a little bit about what you've seen about takeoffs through the years. When you first started, how did you do it? What have you, you and, and your company been doing the last, say, five, ten years, and, and where do you see it going? Well, you know, obviously everything's starting to evolve, and it's been over the last couple of years is really starting to evolve further and further. As you may have seen, we used to do takeoffs where it was just by hand. You know, you had a ruler or you might have had uh, a, um, a wheel, is what we used to say, a little, little wheel that used to count it. That was when we got that. That was very big for us. And then we went to digitizer pads, where you would be able to take the, the hard print. You would right. have to print out the drawings on top, of, on, on top right. of it, and you'd have to take it off. Uh, and like you were saying, you know, you'd get a phone call or something, and you'd forget where you were. Right. Yeah, and you'd start all over again. Uh, but the digitizer was huge. And there, that would be on some little screen that you look at it, and then you have to take and write that down aside, and then put that into your takeoff in there. And then... We uh, got th uh, different programs. Um, latest and greatest, obviously, is is our on screen, mm -hmm. uh, which we are using a lot today. Um, as you were pointing out, uh, as you saw Spencer, he was setting up the job. And one of the things about on screen that takes a little bit of time is to set it up. And when you were setting up the jobs, it takes a little bit. And I think what you'll see as you kind of will zoom in on him here in a little bit is once you start getting things taken off, and if 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 it's a pattern. You could take and copy and paste, copy and paste. And then you start getting kind of ro the ball, a so yeah. get a little rhythm and going. So there are jobs that we've had that are very repetitive. Goes up the building and you can do a floor and you can copy a floor. And what's the quickest that could be though? Uh, you're looking about, you know, realistically, I, you could do it in a day. A day. If so, no phone calls, right, no, no options. Leave, <laughs> you know, and so, but that never happens, right. uh, obviously. So usually it's a, it's a couple of days, right. and depending on what level the estimate is, but, and then how intricate it is, because we've had jobs that none of the floors match, and it took us three weeks to right. put together something. So it's just one of those things that it, just, it, it can take a long period of time. What, now with companies like Togol out there that are automating this process that you just mentioned takes a human eight hours at best to do this takeoff, what do you see estimators doing with their time now? Well, what the great thing about it is, is if we can get the estimators to do something in a shorter period of time. A task like this is something that is so valuable to our industry, but we, we need them to grow as estimators. We can take them from this task and put them on other tasks that can be so much better for our company to get awarded work, but even to the point that we can get people to grow. Because as you know, in the industry now, there's not very many people. And so we need to try to hold on to our, our workers and we need to grow them as workers. And I imagine it's fair to say that these young estimators we have uh, and you have coming in, into your company don't necessarily want to be coloring and drawing polygons. They, they want to be using their brains and creativity and, and being an engineer and, and, and really adding value. They're too smart for that. Right. You know, they're, 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 thank God for the, for the younger generation mm -hmm. because with them, we're now taking the, our industry mm -hmm. to the next level. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to put them back mm -hmm. on stuff that we used to do. They, they know how to do it faster and we let, let them go. So does Togo actually make the estimator even more valuable? Absolutely, absolutely. You, you can, the, just making them valuable so that they can look at the job as a whole, get this task done, mm -hmm. get it done with accuracy and get it to where we can use it and they move on and they can really be a different asset to the estimate process. Right, because they're really now helping us win work, right? The, the things that they're doing with the value engineering, improving mm -hmm. the job for the client will ultimately help you win more work. Find, finding, finding issues in the drawing so that we can bring it to the attention of the design professionals. Finding things that are important to the client so that we can get to their goal. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. In today's day and age, I, I dare to say post-COVID, but people seem to be working remote more often. How important is it that, that you can do this in the cloud, that you could do it from the comfort of your, your house or if you're traveling or your office, whatever it might be? Just from one aspect of being able to share mm -hmm. is amazing because there are certain programs that you can, if it's only on someone's computer and if they're not there, then guess what? You got to wait until they're there. And so the cloud is very, very important to it because now what it does is it brings teams together. We can have other people working on it simultaneously. So it's, it's very important. And Chris, you have a team of estimators under you. Would you ever go in and look at the work product that they're doing and see how far along they are with the takeoff and maybe make some tweaks to it? No, I just yelled at them. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you know, we, we definitely look over their shoulder. We're trying to get, we're trying to get where they're becoming a part of the process, yeah. where it's not just, hey, giving it to you, here, Mr. Mm -hmm. Boss, 
take it and go do it. Now they're part of it. You're, you're able to ask them questions and get them involved in the process. Right. And so tell us just finally here about accuracy and how important is accuracy? Because as we were talking about earlier, if you're too low on a bid, you could lose your company. If you're too high, you're never going to win work. So there's a sweet spot there. And so how important is it and how much of that's the takeoff? Oh, accuracy is everything. Because as we do our estimates, we go from a rough order of magnitude to a schematic to a schematic to an IGMP. Mm -hmm. We're presenting numbers, and if the accuracy was wrong here, mm -hmm. and then we, we, if we go present a number here, and now we gotta present a new number here, at, at best case scenario, you got egg on your face. That's right. like best case scenario. And, and you could lose the job mm -hmm. if you don't have good accuracy. Mm -hmm. And we, we need that as, as we're putting together the estimates, we need that accuracy so that we can go confidently and be aggressive with our numbers. Mm -hmm. And so Chris, your company then, do you have a, a set of historical numbers and pricing from the all the jobs that you've done in the past? We do, we, we, we definitely, we, uh, history, cost issues are the most important thing as we're doing these schematics and ROMs so that we can give clients an indication of where, they're, where they need to be. Because when they're given that to us, that schematic estimating process, they're putting together their performance. Mm -hmm. So that's their most important right. time. And then, and then when we get to the IGMP, the, we need this so that we can validate. We get into things where in the beginning, we're doing it to create an estimate. When we do it in an IGMP and a GMP, we're doing it to validate certain subs to make sure, hey, does their number Makes appear sense. right? Does right. it make sense? So if you've got the historical data, then the most important thing becomes that takeoff. So mm -hmm. a company like Togo that's using machine learning that's been trained on tens and tens and tens of thousands of sets of plans that is now taking a task that traditionally takes a human eight hours minimum doing it instantly and doing it more accurately is critical to a construction Absolutely. company of any size to help yeah. them win more work. So, uh, Chris, thank you very much Appreciate for your time. It. Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. All Thanks. Right.